Hey, brothers and sisters, especially the faithful of St. Anthony Parish in San Gabriel, happy Palm Sunday. In Matthew's passion narrative of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he includes an interesting detail. Right after Jesus dies upon the cross, it says that the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. Why does he include that detail? What is that about? Well, in order to understand it, we got to go back, we got to think. For Jews, the temple was a sacred place of encounter with God. It was the place of encounter with God. God dwelled in the temple. So if you wanted to encounter God, you wanted to meet God, you had to go to the temple because that's the house of the Lord. That's where God dwells. And specifically, God dwelled in the Holy of Holies, the innermost chamber of the temple. And at the entrance of the Holy of the Holies was this curtain. So you might think of the curtain as something that concealed God, or the curtain was that which shrouded the mystery of God. And only the high priest could actually enter into the Holy of Holies once a year to give sacrifice and to give praise to God. So this was a place set apart where God dwelled. So with Jesus' death on the cross, the curtain is torn in two. And so Pope Benedict is going to help us understand the significance of the tearing of the veil. And essentially he would say that with the tearing of the veil, a new path is opened to the Lord. It's torn from the top down. The meaning there is that God is the one who has ripped open the, the curtain. Humans would have, would have ripped it open from the bottom to the top, right? Because we can't reach the top. It's, it's up there. No, God opens the curtain and leaves the temple, so to speak, or his presence, you know, extends beyond the temple into his people, right? So in Jesus Christ, God opens up a new pathway to himself. Jesus, the one who gives his life for us upon the cross. And through that salvific act, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God comes to dwell in and among his people. He's no longer simply in the temple. Now he's accessible. A new path is opened up to the Lord. And we've heard St. Paul speak about each Christian, right? As a temple of the Holy Spirit. That, once again, in Christ, we commune with God. God comes to dwell within us. Each of us becomes a temple. So this is important for us, especially in, in, in this time of coronavirus, because it's really difficult not to be able to go to church. <laughs> because church is a sacred place. Rightly so. It's a place set apart. Our Lord abides in the Eucharist in our churches. Obviously, there's a unique, very special reality to God's presence in our Catholic churches. But brothers and sisters, we should not forget God's presence extends beyond the physical boundaries of a church or a sacred space. God comes to dwell within each one of us by virtue of our baptism. So as we're, you know, at home, unable to go to church, let's really live that. Let's remember that, that we, as God's beloved children, as sons and daughters, commune with him. And we're called to share that love that we experience with him personally with those around us. So may our homes be these places of faith, right? The domestic church, little churches where God dwells through our words, through our actions, our service, our love, right? This is how God remains among us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's ask Mother Mary to pray for us, that in the midst of this difficulty, this challenge of not being able to uh, go to church, go to Mass, receive the Blessed Sacrament, the Eucharist, I mean that God still is here, that we are not abandoned, but that God has extended his, 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 his very being himself beyond the confines of the temple into his people, of whom we form a very real part. God bless you.